All right, so for problem one, we got this histogram that shows the prices in dollars or in thousands of dollars of 304 homes that are recently sold in a city. And we have that prices, you know, are starting over here in the far left at $250,000 all the way to looks like $2,500,000. So that's like in the millions, millions, um, thousands. Um, remember 1,000 or 1,000, um, 1,000 is a million dollars. So it's one. So this would be a million dollars right here. Um, and intervals are broken up at um, widths of $250,000. Okay, so um, to figure out which of these statements must be true. All right, so based on the histogram, can we say the minimum price is $250,000? Well, even though this interval goes from 250,000, it technically goes from 250,000 to less than 500,000, meaning that if something was $500,000, it would be this one. But that, that doesn't actually matter in this first part. Um, the, the key that you want to recognize is that just because this contains values from 250,000 to less than 500,000, it doesn't mean that there has to be a value that's $250,000. It just means that if the value was $250,000, it would go in here. So there could be a value that's $250,000, but it doesn't mean there's going to be one that's there. I mean, this could technically really start at $490,000 going now. It just has to fall in this range. So it's not going to be A. Then B, the maximum price is $2,500,000. Or $2,500,000. So, um, over here. Well, there's two reasons it's no. Because if it was two, if it was if it was two million five hundred thousand dollars, it would be in this next interval. Because remember, um, this is a right-handed interval, meaning that if it's five hundred, if it's five hundred thousand dollars, it would be here, seven fifty thousand dollars here, a million here, so on and so forth. But it was two hundred if it was two point five million dollars, it would have to be in here. There's nothing in here, it's definitely not that one. The median price is not greater than $750,000. Okay, so the median price, remember looking at the middle, the middle value of 304. So think of it as like a ranking. 304 people won a race. What would be the middle ranking? Well, you divide this into two, and that would be about 152. So think about like where would the 152nd place be? Person that finished 152nd. So going in order, we got 38. And then the next 120 came in here. So that means the first 158 people are in these two bins. So if the first 158 people are in these two bins, then for sure the 152nd person is going to be in here. So then the median price is not going to be greater than $750,000. It has to be in here. So, it, so actually our answer was NBC. All right, two. Last day, As part of a study on the relationship between the use of tanning beds, tanning booths, and the occurrence of skin cancer, researchers reviewed the medical records of 1,436 people. The table below summarizes tanning booth use for people in the study who did and did not have skin cancer. So we got rows, columns. So always make sure you can understand what the Table is saying. So let's see. Of the people in the study who had skin cancer, what fraction used a tanning booth? Okay, so this is where we have to look at a conditional probability. This is saying of the people who had skin cancer. So the people who had skin cancer would fall in this row. So we actually these two. This is the total skin cancer patients. So saying which fraction used a tanning booth? So tanning booth and had skin cancer. So he uses tanning booth and had skin cancer. He's 190. But well, again, 190 out of the ones that use uh, that ones that had skin cancer. So 190 out of 896. We only care about these. We only actually care about these two out of 896. And so then we look at 190 out of 896. Your answer would be B. Three. 
So researchers, a researcher is conducting a study of charitable donations by surveying a simple random sample of households in a certain city. The researcher wants to determine whether there is convincing statistical evidence that more than 50% of households in the city gave a charitable donation in the past year. That P represent the proportion of all households in the city that gave a charitable donation in the past year. Which of the following are appropriate hypotheses for the researchers? Okay, so this is where we got, you know, we got to decide what our ho and our ha. So our H not, our null hypothesis, and our alternative hypothesis. H O, H A, the ho and the ha. So remember, the the ho, <laughs> you see, though, is the basically um, what we um, what we claim to be true, what we assume will be true, you know. You know, what we assume to be true, like what's like the um, what's uh, what, what will we give the benefit of the doubt to? So, like, here we're looking at if they can figure out, if they can, you know, determine if more than 50% of households gave a charitable donation. So, well, you're just going to assume that that 50% did give a charitable donation. So, our null hypothesis will be that the true proportion is 0.50. Since we're trying to prove that more than 50%, this is more than 50% gave charitable, charitable donations, our alternative is P is greater than 0.5. Because that's what we hope to seek enough evidence or enough or strong enough evidence to prove. So let's see which one then that, that happens to be straight up A. The answer is A. Or a company determines the mean and standard deviation of the number of sick days taken by its employees in one year. Which of the following is the best description of the standard deviation? Okay, so if you're anything like me or had any teacher like me or professor, they're usually pretty good about giving you some structure or like kind of making you be, or being strict about how they want you to um, write or describe or, you know, have a sentence frame for whenever you're talking about what the standard deviation of a distribution or a group is. So remember, standard deviation is a measure of spread, and it's basically the average measure of spread of individuals from the mean value. So on average, these, these individuals will be this far from the mean. So let's see what that would be. So approximately the mean, so we're talking about the approximately the mean distance between the number of sick days by taking by individual employees and the mean number of sick days. So again, we're looking at the mean number versus the uh, um, number of sick days taken by individual employees. So this one looks like this is yeah. This looks like it's probably going to have to be A. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. If, let's look at the other one just in case. I can't really think of another a better description or how they would make it even more clear. Approximately the median. So okay, so see the median. So it's not going to be B. See, like, this highlight that we're talking about mean. So that's that's another reason why it, it should be A. The distance between the greatest number and the mean number. No, that's going to be like basically like like half like half of the range. I guess we can Not necessarily, but the distance from the max to the um, mean. The number of days that are in the few sick days taken by the most sick days used by that's that's range. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that. The number of days separating the fewest sick days taken and the most sick days taken will consider the middle of the percent of the distribution. Um, that's, so some, that's something different. Um, so yeah, our answer will be A. All right, in one region of the country, the mean length of stay in hospital is 5.5 days, the standard deviation is 2.6 days. As many patients stay in the hospital for considerably more days, the distribution of length of stay is strongly skewed to the right. So um, strongly skewed to the right. So remember that we're talking about something like this. So the long tail falling like something like looking something like that. Consider the random sample of the size 100 taken from the distribution with the mean length of stay x bar recorded for each sample. So here we're talking about sampling distribution. Okay, so. Which is the following the best description of the sample distribution in the back bar? Okay, now here's the thing. I know what they're getting at. So 
they're probably trying to trick you into thinking like the 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 shape of the sample distribution of x bar is also going to be skewed but since our sample size is a is you know greater than or equal to usually great it's usually about 30 will be the boundary value but it's a greater than or equal to 30 because it's equal to 100 and equals 100 and that's greater than or equal to 30. This follows from something called, if you remember the central limit theorem, CLT. So when the sample size is big enough, it doesn't matter even your, if your population distribution is skewed right or skewed left or even some strange weird looking shape. The sample distribution of X bar will be approximately normal. So it'll be approximately normal. They'll still have the same mean as the population. They'll have the mean of some of the mean of the standard distribution of XR will also be 100. Now, what's different is the standard deviation of the standard distribution of X bar. There's actually a formula that you can your formula sheet that you can use. So make sure again you're always coming and making yourself comfortable with it. So here we're going to be looking at sampling distribution. So let's see how the mean of the sample distribution of x bar is equal to the mean of the population. The standard deviation of the sample distribution of x bar will be equal to standard deviation of the population over the square root of the sample. So here we have standard deviation of the population is 2.6. The sample size is 100, so over the square root of 100, so 2.6 over 10. The value is 0.26. So let's see what we got. Strongly skewed, so again, not strongly skewed to the right, not strongly skewed, not, not, not A, B, or C. So D or E, it's going to be approximately normal, it's going to be 5.5. And not 2.6, but it'll be 0. Oh, 0. 0.26. Their answer will be E. A local television news station includes a viewer survey question about a current issue at the beginning of every evening news broadcast. Viewers are invited to use social media to respond to the question. The results of the survey are shared with the audience in each broadcast. In relation to the opinion of the population of the region, which is the following is a possible reason of why the results of such, such surveys could be biased. Okay, like there's a lot of reasons surveys could be biased or data could be sampling data could be biased. Um, it depends on the scenario, like what would be valid. Let's see what we got. Viewers with strong opinions about the current issue are more likely to respond than our viewers without strong opinions. Well, yeah, this would work. Um, it's possible, but I'm going to mention more about this in just a minute. The opinions of one television station are not necessarily, not necessarily represented the population of the region. Yeah, yeah, that's why. And again, I'm going to tie this up all together in just a minute. Viewers of access to social media are not necessarily representative of the population of the region. Yeah, because you, you only pick viewers who use social media. Now, this is actually going to be all of these. Like, all these are possible, possible sources of bias. Um, essentially, this is not a, a, a well-conducted study because there's no random sampling. Like, there was, you know, they basically... um. You know, pick the um their participants, um, and use the ones. I mean, obviously, the ones that are that are only going to be um participating are ones that are already not use social media, and um, like we don't really know anything about those people. Like, there's not there there's no uh there's no random you know sign. There's nothing really um done to make sure that you're going to get uh, a well-mixed population of everybody. Um, now, um, this is also why observational studies aren't good for stuff like this. This is why you want to do experiments. This is not really an example where you would want to do an experiment. This is just a good example for you to be aware of, uh, like, how there could be so many, so many sources of biases when conducting sampling surveys. All right, number seven. A graduate student conducted a study of field mice in rural Kansas. 
the student obtained a sample of 100 field mice and reported the weight in grams of each mouse. After the measurements were taken, it was discovered that scale was not calibrated correctly. So it was not calibrated correctly. The student adjusted the 100 recorded measurements by subtracting three. So it took away three from each measurement. And N was 100. 100 measurements. 100 mice, I guess. <clears throat> So which of the following statistics for the weight in grams of the field mice has the same value before and after the adjustment? All right, the mean. Um, no, the mean. The mean's not going to. I'm sorry, the median. It would not be the median. It would be three less. So not that. Not the mean either. Um, it would be you know adjusted two would be less three less. First quartile. Nope. These are all. These are not. These these are easy to calculate because um they're measured at center. But um, they're just um, because they're just positions, you know. They're just positions. Like the, let's say if the median, if they say the median was ten, um, that every if the median would, we would just do three less. Same thing with all these. However, the interquartile range is talking about the distance between two values. So it doesn't actually matter that we had um our original measurements that were um off they were all off by the same amount they're all off by three it doesn't matter if they're greater than three or less than three but they're all off by three so the differences between any two of those values is the same even after it's recalibrated properly and just kind of pick it let's just do it let me just give you a hypothetical example let's say one value was 10 and another one was 20 but then like oh we had to correct these so then they corrected the, the 10 the 10 to 7 and the, the 20 to 17. Now, the, the difference between 10 and 20 is, is, is 10. And even after those are changed, the difference between 7 and 17 are 10. Um, so ranges, um, statistics involving like differences of like spread, if it's this simple, I'm saying it's this simple, aren't going to be adjusted. They'll be the same. Our answer will be easy.